Welcome to the Dale Lally Show here on the DK Pittsburgh Sports Radio Network. I am Dale Lally, your, your host, and uh, well, the Steelers got their first practice in the books on Wednesday here at St. Vincent College. Uh, Deontay Johnson not taking part in that. Uh, this after he had said earlier in the day that uh, he thought he would, uh, he thought he was going to participate, uh, must have spoken to his agent and his agent advised him not to do so. It's the only thing I can assume. I uh, put a call into his agent, uh, did not get a re- uh, reply on that, uh, Bradley Sakela. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. I will say this. I know people are going to freak out about that, but Deontay Johnson didn't practice and they're going to automatically assume the worst. Um, it was kind of wet and rainy today. And if I were in a situation where I was trying to get a new contract, I might not practice either in that situation, especially as a wide receiver who, who makes a lot of quick cuts and does things like that, because you're only going to cost yourself money if you get hurt. And that's certainly uh, something that they want to try to avoid, uh, certainly in Deontay Johnson's camp, because he's the 65th highest paid wide receiver in the league this year. I know people say, well, he's not worth $20 million a year, $25 million a year, whatever, whatever number you want to pick out of a hat uh, with some of the other contracts that have been signed out there. But I think we can all agree that he's been underpaid for what he's done thus far in his career. And it's, it's, it's almost a uh, Le'Veon Bell type situation where, you know, if a guy wasn't a first round draft pick, you don't make big, big money. Um, that's just the, the reality of it. Yeah, you make good money. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And Deontay Johnson uh, is scheduled to make $2.79 million this year. Certainly none of us would, would uh, you know, put our nose up, stick our nose up at that. But you know who makes more money than Deontay Johnson this year? Who's going to make more money than Deontay Johnson? When you take his rookie contract, what he's going to be paid as a rookie, and the signing bonus that he got this year? George Pickens, the Steelers' second-round draft pick counts or or has a salary and signing bonus this year. So what he's actually been paid out, $2.795 million. So $5,000 more than Deontay Johnson is being paid this year. You know who's right above that? 63rd in the league in in pay? Juju Smith-Schuster at $2.89 million. And he's got a bunch of of things in his written into his contract that uh, could escalate that. Other guys who are going to make more money this year. Than Deontay Johnson. Tyquan Thornton, who's never played a down in the NFL, is a second round pick of the Patriots, just over $3 million this year. Traquan Smith of the Saints is going to make $3.1 million this year. Jakeem Grant with the Browns at $3.205 million this year is going to make more money than in Deontay Johnson. John Mechie. With the Houston Texans, he's not going to play at all this year because he was diagnosed with leukemia last week. He's going to make $3.75 million this year. Wondell Robinson, another rookie, $3.8 million. Jacoby Myers, $3.98 million. Same thing with DK Metcalf and Debo Samuel. That's what those guys are scheduled to make. Deontay Hardy with the New Orleans Saints, I couldn't pick Deontay Hardy out of a lineup. He's going to make $3.986 million this year. Byron Pringle, Christian Watson, Kendrick Bourne, uh, Tim Patrick, Braxton Berrios. These guys are all making more money than Deontay Johnson this year. Deontay Johnson had 107 catches last year and went to the Pro Bowl. That's one of the big reasons why I believe the NFL should go to two-year contracts. Or even one year conscious, you want give players want guaranteed money. The way to guarantee it is is have all your have contracts go year to year. I know you want financial st- uh, you know stability and all that stuff, and you want to sign the the long term contract. But the long term contracts aren't typically guaranteed, and if you want a fully guaranteed contract, they're certainly not guaranteed for non quarterbacks. If you want a fully guaranteed contract. Sign a contract year to year based on what you did the previous season and what the team's expectation is for you that next season. Make those things year to year. Now, I'm not saying you couldn't, a team couldn't have that player's rights for that season. But Deontay Johnson has is, is, is outplayed his contract. Coming into this year, 
Deontay Johnson in his career, in his career, is is barely touched. You know, people say, well, these guys are all millionaires. In three seasons, he's made $3.2 million. And again, that's a lot of money. I get it. But of that money, Deontay Johnson probably hasn't even seen two million of it by the time Uncle Sam gets his cut, pays his agent. Then he has to pay for training and all the other stuff that they have to do to be a, a top level athlete. It dries up quickly. And so I get it. You want to you want to cash in as much as you can in this because careers are short. So I don't I don't begrudge Deontay Johnson trying to get as much money as he can out of the Steelers. That's how this works. That's the situation. That's it, it is. It, players always say, it's, well, that's just the business side of things. And that's absolutely 100 percent true. It is the business side of things. And, you know, NFL players, again, their careers are very short and they can end in a heartbeat. As we saw with Ryan Shazier. If we need any reminders of that, things can end very quickly for these guys, even a star player like Shazier. And so I don't, I, I never look at what, what a player, when a player is asking for what I believe to be a fair contract. And I think that's what Deontay Johnson's asking for based on, I obviously don't know. And I, I've made some calls into his agent and haven't gotten any kind of, of answer on this, but I, I, you know, I don't think Deontay Johnson's going to ask for $25 million, nor should he get $25 million. But if the going rate for a guy of Deontay Johnson's talents is $20 million a year on average, you can finagle things as the Steelers to make that work. Most certainly. And, uh, you know, you can write that contract, much as they did with many of the contracts that they did this offseason, and make it a, a, you know, a one or a two you know, a two year deal that you have an option to get out of in two years. If you don't think he's worth it, then you can cut him. Now the Steelers don't typically like to do that, but they did write contracts like that this off season for Mason Cole, for Chuksa Kaur, for even, you know, the, the contracts for Mitch Trubisky and Miles Jack were written in a way of, they're written in a way that the Steelers could get out of those after a year or two with very little financial culpability. So, you know, they could do those kind of things if they choose to do that. I expect Deontay Johnson, this, this is not going to linger long. I think at some point he's going to be back on the football field, whether he has a contract or not, that's a, that's a situation. So uh, I, I don't think this is going to be a, a long-term situation. So we'll see what happens. We'll talk about uh, other things that happened in Wednesday's practice. When we return, I'm Dale Lally. You're listening to The Dale Lally Show here on the DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcast Network. Dale Lally. You're listening to the Dale Lally show here on the DK Pittsburgh sports podcasting network. And uh, we heard from the quarterbacks on Wednesday. And of course, everybody's focused on the quarterbacks here as the Steelers open training at their first training camp in oh, almost two decades without Ben Roethlisberger. Um, nothing changed. Mitch Trubisky still getting all the work with the ones Mason Rudolph still getting all the work with the twos and Kenny Pickett getting all the work with the threes. And I don't expect that to change unless Mitch Trubisky just completely stinks the place up. And I don't think that's going to happen. The Steelers want Mitch Trubisky to be their starter this year. Would it be nice if, if Kenny Pickett suddenly turned, you know, suddenly became the second coming of Ben Roethlisberger? Absolutely. The Steelers wouldn't certainly wouldn't mind that at all. But the reality is, 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 you know, there's no such thing. I know everybody throws the, well, he was the most NFL ready quarterback in this year's draft. There's no such thing as an NFL ready quarterback. Look at what happened with the quarterbacks last year. Trevor Lawrence was considered a generational talent at the quarterback position. And yet he struggled as a rookie. 
as good a season as Mac Jones had last year for the Patriots, he faltered down the stretch. He wasn't very good down the stretch. His last six or so games were not good. Teams figured him out. So there are going to be rookie struggles. The Steelers would like those rookie struggles to come in practice and allow Kenny Pickett to ease his way into things. That was the idea with Ben Roethlisberger back in 2004. That hasn't changed for Kenny Pickett. The idea is to get this guy as ready to play as possible, maybe in year two, maybe it's in year three. They've got Mitch Trubisky under contract for next year as well. And I don't expect, unless Mitch Trubisky really struggles this season, we may not see Kenny Pickett at all this year. We'll see. If, but if they're, if they're battling for a playoff spot, if they're in the hunt, they're not going to change quarterbacks. So the idea is to allow Pickett to ease his way into this. And he looked like a rookie on Wednesday in his first practice. He, he struggled a little bit here and there with some throws, with some, some timing. The speed of the game is different. Every, every time you take a step forward, it, it amps up just a little bit more. So OTAs to minicamp, to the start of training camp, amps up even more. That first preseason game will be even more fast. But what the team wants to see from Kenny Pickett is him taking steps along the way, not making the same mistakes, getting better each and every day. That's what they want to see out of Kenny Pickett. And that's what we'll see as, as we continue to get through this process We'll see if that's what happens with Kenny Pickett. But that's going to do it for today's Dale Lolly Show here on the DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcast Network. I appreciate you listening to this one. You can listen to all of our shows here. we got daily shows uh, from, uh, for Dayan Kovakovic, his, his uh, daily shots on the Steelers, the Penguins, the Pirates. we got all of our other ancillary shows on here as well that you can listen to. We appreciate you when you do that. Uh, but I'll be back again tomorrow with... Another edition of the Dale Lolly Show here on the DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcasting Network.